Welcome back to the Force Nines YouTube channel. Welcome back to Tale of the Toffers, the Everton save on Football Manager 2017. And today we are going to be starting our third and final season with Everton. Not with a Premier League game, but with the Community Shield. Man United won everything else last season. FA Cup, EFL Cup, won the Community Shield last year as well. So as a runners-up in the Premier League, we get a chance to face them in the Community Shield. We're in the 11th game against Man United. And I said at the end of the last episode that I do want some silverware this season, so we may as well get some. Let's wait and see. Uh, before we get into today's video, there's just an apology about last time. The stream was a bit choppy, and I do apologise for that. Uh, I've lowered the bit rate a bit, so hopefully it will be okay. But it's been working fine. It was at like 5,000 KB per second, and it's been working fine. But I recorded something else, and uh, it just seemed to mess it up so i'm not quite sure what happened there but i've lowered the bit rate hopefully it will work well but, um yeah uh let's see if it goes well so man united is the game we're going to play today we're going to talk to get some silverware but before we do that i've got some transfers to show you it's been a bit of an eventful window for ins and outs so let's see what's been happening okay so we've got a couple of youngsters that have signed including this uh, guy here sal salcedo Paraguayan centre back. Unfortunately, he did not get a work permit, so we can't actually use him. So he has gone on loan to some club in Ukraine called Zerka. But um, if he does eventually get a work permit, he could be a very good centre back uh, in the future. For now, you know, he could probably come in, but fortunately, as I said, he needs a work permit. Very balanced attributes, as you can see. Lots of 12s and 13s for a 20 year old. Hopefully, they'll improve, and hopefully, we will be able to play him soon. But uh, it's a bit touch and go at the moment. I'm not sure when we can apply for a work permit again. This is Roberto Jude, or Jude, I'm not quite sure, um, but we may well change his first name to Hay. Uh, he's played a few games off screen actually, and he scored a hat trick in one of our friendlies. 17 year old Romanian bought from a club called Poly. He's a right winger by trade, first touch of 18 is very good. In fact, let's have a look at him as a right winger. There's that first touch of 18, great determination. Physicals are good, he's got decent pace, and for a 17 year old, again, as I always say, that will improve with time. So again, uh, hopefully a fantastic player in the future. And uh, we may see him a few times in this season, in fact, because uh, we're a bit short of options on the right wing. You'll see soon, see why, very shortly. Okay, so now we get into some of the first team players. Now we've got a backup goalkeeper. This is Jordan Pickford, of course, Sunderland player and England under-21 goalkeeper. Signed from Sunderland for an uh, initial fee of £6.5 million. Pounds. Uh, played almost every game. Let's say they played every league game for, South for Sunderland last season. Conceded 58 goals. And then we brought him in. Uh, he's going to be a backup to Akiko Kassir. Uh, Stekelberg is hopefully on his way out, but nobody wants him. And uh, Ariola on loan for a bit last season didn't get a single game. And uh, Joel Robles has also been released on a free transfer because his contract expired. So we needed a backup goalkeeper, and I've gone with Jordan Pickford, partly because he's English. At centre back, we've gone to Burnley and we've raided Michael Keane. I do like the look of this defender. He looks very good with 15 heading, 14 marking, and 14 tackling. And uh, we paid £16 million pounds for him, which I don't think is that bad for a Burnley play. You know, it's okay, I think. Um, we tried going in at 10 at first, but um, Burnley were, you know, asking for a little bit more. So uh, we settled on 16 million, which I think actually is his release clause. So uh, that's not too bad. As you can see, he got um, 37 appearances last season, averaged over seven in both seasons, which is always good to see. And he may well be first choice centre back for uh, for the season because he looks very decent. Got a bit of an all rounder for the attacking midfield. We have signed Luan, a player that I've been looking at for the whole series from the very first transfer window. And we have got him in. He's age 25, Brazilian. He has been capped for the team. He cost £20 million from Gremio. And uh, hopefully he will do a job primarily pl primarily playing as a left midfielder, maybe as an inside forward. Uh, he looks very solid, good, good at dribbling at 15, decent first touch. Good with penalties and his technique's fantastic as well. Mentals look pretty solid, pretty pacey, good agility. So uh, I like the look of Luan and I think it'll be a tough tussle, tough tussle between him and Delafeu for that first choice uh, left midfield slot. We have signed the right midfielder. Uh, I did look uh, all over the place for one that I really wanted. And in the end, we've gone with Lucas Vasquez of uh, Real Madrid. He costs nine and a quarter million pounds. He hasn't played a great deal for Real Madrid. Uh, he signed there from, uh, well, he was playing for the Real Madrid B. He went to Espanyol for two seasons, went back to Madrid and uh, didn't really feature that much. Uh, and now he's joined Everton and he will probably be first choice on that right wing unless we buy another one because we have a lot of money to play with. Uh, I really want Kingsley Coman, but um, I mean, Bayern Munich are going in with like 90 million pounds. I, mean, I can't afford 90 million pounds and I probably won't be able to afford his wage. 
But I'm looking for a real game changer on that right hand side because that's one area that we are really lacking at the moment. At the moment we have Vasquez there, but to be honest, at the moment he's just a placeholder. Uh, we've also got Nacho possibly coming in from Juventus, a guy that, again, we looked at before, but we lost him out to Juventus, who uh, signed him instead of us, uh, and he played 14 games in two seasons. So uh, we've gone in again for him, and uh, how much should we offer him for him? Nine and a quarter million pounds again, same as Vasquez. It may, rate, may go up about another million, but we're looking at him, and you can see a lot of players there that uh, are attracting interest. Sink Graven, we are trying to sell. We've got some loan offers from him for some championship and uh, Premier League and League One teams. I don't know, his value was just diminished. It was like, like two million pounds. I was trying to sell him for four. There was absolutely no interest. I think Brighton offered me about 300,000 pounds for him and that was a slap in the face. But uh, Sink Graven, you know, maybe he's not as good as I thought he was. He's uh, been a bit of a disappointed sign signing for me, which was uh, I think January of the first season he joined or maybe even in the summer, I'm not quite sure. But uh, yeah, he hasn't been a great signing for me. He's actually gone on loan to Birmingham. Also, you can see uh, Williams has attracted interest. Barcelona made an offer for him. He got upset that I rejected it, so he is now unhappy. So who has actually left the club? Well, we if it says that we have £109 million in the transfer budget, considering we started on about 80, there's been a big sale, and I'll show you who it is. There you go then, Felipe Anderson has gone to Manchester City. Now, this was out of my hands, and uh, I did not see... Uh, that he had a 55 million pound release clause in his con contract. So uh, Manchester City came a call in, uh, made a bid of about 32 million pounds, which I rejected, and then they came in again and made an offer which was um, in total around 50 million pounds, but again I rejected. And then they triggered his release clause, 55 million pounds up front. So uh, there was nothing we could do, and he's gone to Man City and he's earning 205,000 pounds a week. Well. Okay, for £55 million, okay, you can have him. There it is. Played 35 games for us last season. Took a while to get going, but he did get six goals and six assists in the end. Not too bad. He was our record signing, but he was only with us for one season because uh, they triggered his release clause. So also leaving, you can see Yannick Balassi has gone. Had a bit of a disappointing spell for me. Didn't really feature in the first team a great deal. A lot of substitute appearances. But he did well in the end. You know, he had some good spells, but again, he had bad spells. And I thought it was time to cash in while we still could. So we've got £18 million. Pounds where we made a bit of a loss on him, but that's not too disappointing. He has gone to Southampton. Hopefully, he won't cause us too much grief when we face them in the league, but we'll wait and see. Uh, so, yeah, you see Joel Robles has gone on a free. Uh, we have sold Funes Mori. He's gone to Shakhtar Donetsk. Uh, initial fee of 4.7 million pounds that could rise to seven and then a bunch of players have gone on loan to various clubs you can see Anderson's gone on loan Walsh has gone out again uh, Holgate guys that you know weren't really going to feature in the team too much I mean Anderson in the future maybe but, um, his uh, rating is kind of decreasing Holgate again a player that you'll probably never see in the first team uh, as good as he might be good for a right back but we haven't really played him very much so uh, he's at for Forest who I think are paying all of his wages so uh, at least it's off the wage bill. So we've spent 53 million pounds and we've brought in 78 million pounds. There is still some areas that I want to improve. As I said, I'm trying to buy Nacho and I do want a game changer for that right hand side as well. Just to give you an idea of the sort of people we were looking at. I was looking at people like Coleman, as I said, uh, Mbolo, Gabriel Jesus, uh, Barboza, Lamela, Salah, Fakir. Some real, pro like really, really good players here, but the values were just too much, and then if we did get offers accepted, the um, wage was just far too much. I mean, Lucas Mora was a player that we actually had a bid accepted for, and then he went in and said that he wants his 180 grand a week. Our highest earner is on half that. So, really, we can't be signing anyone um, unless they want, well, if they want over 100 grand a week, we can't really, well, we can't really pay them that because it would just be far too much a discrepancy. I mean, Yarmolenko could be a really good option. Um, he's got a six and a half million pound value. We could get him for around 30 million maybe, and he looks very decent. So, but, um, let's just make an offer, let's have a look. Um, let, right, let's offer, oh no, let's offer 23. What are you saying about 23 million pounds? They don't even want to know. Uh, all right, <laughs> let's make an inquiry. Let's see what they want. Uh, while we're waiting for that, uh, let's have a look at the friendies. Now, I didn't play any of these friendlies. These were all done by my um, assistant, so I didn't actually play any of these. 0-0 uh, draw against Kansas that ended our tour of America, where there were some great players on the bench because for some reason our squad was tiny. Don't know why. Uh, Leighton Baines' testimonial against Wigan. We won 2-0. Barahino scoring both goals there in the, in the last 10 minutes or so. 
Uh, Zenit St. Petersburg, we won 2 0. Berahino and Delafe with goals in the first half. 4-0 uh, win against Blackburn Rovers, Berahino and Lukaku getting two goals each uh, in each half. 5-2 win against Anderlecht, uh, Roberto Judy scored the hat-trick, uh, Luan and Lucas Senior, also a uh, regen, got on the score sheet. It's a couple of goals for the Anderlecht players there. 1-0 defeat against uh, Sheffield United in Jagielka's testimonial, Lewis Graben scored the goal there. 4-0 uh, win in Spain against Cordoba, Lukaku getting all four goals in that game. 2-2 draw against uh, Spanish Segunda side Real Irún, which is a disappointing one. Uh, Duarte and Og Ogzan getting the goals there. And then a 4-0 win against the Agostera. Lukaku with two goals, Luan with a goal, and the youngster Nicky Clark with a goal as well. Are they in the third, second tier as well? They are indeed. But, so yeah, Man United in the community show today. Uh, next episode, we'll jump straight into the Premier League uh, opener. Maybe a double header, maybe do both Bournemouth and Man City. Let's see what sort of time we've got. Uh, we have a Champions League group draw coming soon. Uh, we'll find out who we get in the cup. So uh, some exciting times coming up. It's the last season. We're going to see how, if we can push for a title. But if Man United play like they did last season, it's going to be hard. Because Man United are extremely tough to beat. But let's try and do it today. So there you see just how well we fared against Man United in the 10 games we played over two seasons. Uh, one win and one draw. And uh, eight wins for Man United. So uh, that's what it's been like at the moment. United have... Uh, I think they've won the last six games against us, so yeah. Okay, so the team we are going to go for today looks a bit like this. Casilla in goal, back four of Williams Baines, uh, Michael Keane, former United player of course, played for United before he went to Burnley, uh, Seamus Coleman at right back, uh, Gray and Ogzan, Barkley playing in the number 10 role, even though he's number 8, Delefeo on his right, Vasquez on his left makes his uh, professional senior debut, and Lukaku up front. Uh, the bench, I need to sort this out. Okay, so the bench is going to be Santon, Duarte, Onazi, Ward-Prowse, Klassen, Luan, and Berahino. Santon, another player that I might look at moving on. He's done okay. We signed him uh, in the first season. In fact, he's done pretty well, actually. We might not even sell him. But uh, right-backs have been a bit poor at the moment. We probably need a better right-back. That was what Nacho will be, though. He can play all along that back line. United are favourites, but uh, it looks like it's going to be tough. So they've got a 4-4-1-1. De Gea, Blind, Rojo, Smalling, uh, Lyon, Depay, more Pog... I need to say Mogba then. Who the hell is Mogba? Pogba, Herrera, uh, Yanazai, Rooney and Rashford. And the uh, bench, uh, Romero, uh, Benatia, Fuzimensa, Bertaccini, McIntosh, Baldazzi and Fellaini. All right, we're going to go with the passionate team talk and say win the trophy for the fans. Let's, you know, it's the first game of the th third season. And I said I want silverware this season. Let's achieve that goal in our very first game. It's Man United. We could do have given them a beating. So uh, let's see if we can do that. One time in 10 games we've beaten these guys. And I think that was in our very first season and it was in an EFL Cup game. Marcus Rashford is on the ball here. He's going to go it alone. I mean, he's got great dribbling skills. He's put a shot away and it's held on to by uh, Casilla. Do you know what? I'm going to go attacking. We're having more of the ball. We haven't really threatened their goal too much. So I've got an attacking. Let's see if we can find a goal. Here is Delefeu. He's been dispossessed by a Lyon. And here is Anan Yanezai. Now Rooney. And uh, Rashford here, he's got a lot of people to get past, he puts a shot away, but it wasn't on target. United having shots, but um, they've, neither team have really threatened the other team's goalkeeper so far. United have had four shots on target, but there haven't been great chances. It looks like we're going to go in a half-time still near and ill, which isn't too bad. Usually United end up with like a three or four goal lead in the first half. So it's good to actually be level pegging after 45 minutes for a change. I want to shut up Mourinho as well. Mourinho really gets under my skin on this game. It's so, so annoying just how... How much of an arse he is. So uh, I want to win over Mourinho as well. I don't like him as a person. I don't like him as a manager in the game. He's a knob. And I don't want him to beat me again. United uh, having, you know, they're, they're attacking a lot here. We haven't really seen highlights from us. Rashford has been through on goal a couple of times. And he's found a goal here but only hits the side netting. I'm going to go about the counter-attack. Even though we're having more possession. United are having the better chances so far. They've had their first clear-cut chance. Uh, we're actually going to make a change with 55 minutes played. We're going to bring on uh, Luan for Delefeu. Let's uh, see if the Brazilian can add a bit of Brazilian flair to the match. We're going to bring on Klassen for Barkley. We need to start thinking about penalty takers as well. If this is going to go all the way, if it goes to a shootout, then uh, we need to start thinking about bringing on guys like Berahino. Um, oh Gray's given the ball away here. If this ends in a goal, it doesn't. Fellaini's header is straight at Casilla. But uh, Gray gave the ball away pretty cheaply there, and that would have been annoying if that had ended in a goal. Here is Fellaini, who scored a hat-trick against this in the previous game. Hopefully that's not foreboding. 
Um, Willems is on the ball here, passes back to Kassia. And uh, we've only had the one shot on target so far today, which is a bit disappointing that we haven't really threatened their goal very much as uh, Memphis has a shot from range. I'm going back to attacking because I want <laughs> I want to get more shots away. Do we go shoot on site maybe? I don't know. Here is Ogzan, Luan. I mean, if we win this game, we don't really deserve to win it. United have had 17 shots in the game. Haven't had so much possession, but we've rarely threatened their goal. Here is Smalling to Blind. Memphis to Pogba, Fellaini. Bertaccini, he's got space to run into here. He has a shot, but again, that's way with... United's shots have been speculative to say the least. Eight shots missing the target. Last 10 minutes of the game, it is still 0-0. These are usually really high scoring games. We've seen three twos, we've seen four twos, we've seen six ones, as Klaassen has a really weak effort there. And here is Yanazai, five minutes left in the game. If United leave it as late as this and win, I'm going to be annoyed. But Bertaccini is on goal here, and he scores. And what did I say about foreboding? Let's pause the game, go overload. Well, it never works. I don't know why we bother going overload. You never actually see any football, because it's just... The last five minutes is just going to run down now. That's just the law of the game. That's the football manager law. Alright, so let's see the replay in 3D from that behind goal camera. Hopefully this looks good, because uh, you couldn't really see replays in the last game. And Casilla went for an absolute diving save. Bertaccini pretty much put it under him. I don't know what Casilla was doing there. He's got a 6.3 for that. He was on, like, over 7 before that. Um, what did I say about the time running down? We're into injury time now. And again, that's run down, and uh, we're almost at full time, but Oxan free kick goes over. Got me excited then, Oxan scores, we've scored a lot of free kicks this season. I think we've scored at least three or four a season, and that's full time. Everton nil, Man United won. Uh, Community Shield ends in a, in a defeat. Not happy about that, I mean, Casilla. You should have saved that, I don't know what you were doing. The front three didn't work, it's, yeah. It's, it's the, one of the closest results, but... Two shots on target out of 11 is not good enough. And we need to be better than that if it comes to the actual season, if we want to win the title. Oh, here we go. Nacho is about to be confirmed, so that's not too bad. 9.25 million pounds. So we'll accept that. And that's another signing in the uh, in, in the van. Everton snap up Nacho. That's good signing. So uh, we'll see him maybe throughout the season. So next episode, we will jump straight into the game against uh, Bournemouth. And if we have time after that, we'll play Man City as well. Um, but yeah, we may see some more signings in then. There's about a week, so I doubt that we get get deals done within a week. But if there's any, any other developments, I will be sure to let you know. And uh, yeah, next episode we'll kick off the Premier League and hopefully start off with a good result against Bournemouth. That should be a game that we can win, well, hopefully easily, but we'll have to wait and see. But that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below. Hopefully the uh, footage wasn't too bad today, the 3D stuff, because it was a bit jumpy last time around. And again, I apologize for that. But hopefully today it worked out all right. But as I said, leave a like if you enjoyed the video down below. And if you're enjoying the series so far, uh, leave in a comment if you want to make down there as well. Um, signing suggestions maybe although I don't think really know where us apart from that right midfield where else do we improve I don't know maybe another striker but we've got a lot of young players that we can rely on and I do like in my third season to try and use some of these youngsters so um, we may be okay but I think a right midfielder is definitely something we need and uh, if, we, if we have to break the bank, then we have to break the bank. But uh, wage is going to be a big issue. And if you want to see videos as I'm ready to turn up on YouTube, hit subscribe. I'll see you in the next video for uh, the warm-up game. Hopefully we get a good result after a disappointing defeat in the Community Shield today to Man United. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.